Hello Mishpacha, it's Courtney, America's Jewish Mother. Welcome back to my channel, and I'm here today with a mid-month wrap-up. I'm trying something different. So, um, so in the first half of April, I have read five books, so I'm going to tell you about those, and then at the end of this, I'm going to do like a little currently reading rundown. Um, so the first book that I finished at, uh, at the beginning of April um, was George by Alex Gino. Um, this is a middle grade book. Uh, it is about a transgender girl named George, later Melissa, um, who really loves Charlotte's Web and really wants to be Charlotte in her school production of Charlotte's Web. Um, but she's not allowed to do that. Um, and so it's about her sort of understanding her own gender identity and revealing that to people in her life as well as, you know, wanting to be, play the role of Charlotte in, in the school production of Charlotte's Web. Um, I found this a really sweet book. I thought it was very thoughtfully done. I really liked the relationships between the various characters. George has a best friend named Kelly. Their relationship is very sweet. Um, I also liked George's relationship with her brother. I thought that was also portrayed quite tenderly. Um, and then also George's relationship with her mother I thought was very realistically portrayed. Um, the mother does not immediately accept George's reveal about her gender identity, but it's clear that she cares about her child um, and, you know, kind of eventually comes around to it after some, some initial trepidation. Um, so I really liked this overall. I ended up giving it four stars. Um, I think it would be a great book to read if you enjoy middle grade books or books that are about LGBTQ protagonists. Um, like just a couple of things kept me from giving it the full five stars. Um, one was I did feel like it kind of leaned into some gender stereotypes in a way that I felt like could have maybe been avoided. Um, and I also feel like George's best friend Kelly was just kind of immediately accepting of George's gender identity when George reveals that to her. And I, I mean, I just sort of feel like, wouldn't Kelly have had more questions? <laughs> but aside from those two issues, I, I really liked it overall and I would, I would certainly recommend it. Um, and it was a good way to start off my reading month, um, four stars. So the next book I finished was Cynthia Ozick's Dictation, A Quartet. Um, so this is a collection of four short stories by my beloved Cynthia Ozick. Uh, if you've been following my channel for much time at all, you know I really, really love Cynthia Ozick. Uh, this woman is 93 or 94 years old at this point, I believe, and she just last month published a new short story in The New Yorker. She's 90 plus years old and she's still writing stories, y'all. That is amazing. <laughs> Um, so anyway, so this is a collection of, of short stories from um, different times uh, in, in her life. The oldest one in here is from 1984, I believe. There's one from the late 90s, mid, mid to late 90s, and then there are two from the 2000s. Um, so uh, the title story, Dictation, is about uh, these two secretaries or uh, uh, amanuenses, I believe. Um, of Henry James and Joseph Conrad um, and about a sort of plot that they hatch between them uh, to be remembered uh, throughout, throughout history. Um, and then there's a story called Actors. It's about a Jewish King Lear. Love that. <laughs> um, then there's a story called At Fumicaro, which is about a Catholic man who while he's visiting Italy, ends up eloping with a chambermaid. Um, and then the last story in here is called, I think it's called What, what Happened to the Baby. Is that right? Let's see. Uh, yes, What Happened to the Baby. So that is a story about a the development of a universal language called Nu, G-N-U, like the animal, that's supposed to be a rival to Esperanto as a universal language. Um, so I really liked this overall. I gave it four and a half stars. Um, the common thread of all four stories in this, this 
slim little collection is that really all of them have to do with the ways in which we delude ourselves um, and lie to ourselves about our own intentions and motivations. Um, and I'm actually going to read the very last sentence um, sentence or two of the, of, the, of the last story because I think it so nicely encapsulates it. And it, this is not a spoiler, by the way. So this, these are the last two sentences of the, of, the, of the what happened to the baby story. And was that it really what Essie gave out just then in her mer mercurial frenzied whisper? Lie, illusion, deception, she said. Was that it truly, the universal language we all speak? Um, and that really, again, kind of gets to the heart of what each of these stories is about, the, way, the ways in which we lie to and delude ourselves and others. And I just thought it was awesome. Um, the title story, Dictation, was my favorite. And then I also really liked Actors and What Happened to the Baby. I didn't like Afi Makaro as much, but I could see how thematically it worked with the, with the rest of them. Um, so yeah, I love this. I gave it four and a half stars. Um, and I highly, highly recommend checking out Cynthia Ozick if you've never read anything by her. You can read her latest uh, short story in The New Yorker. It's called The Biographer's Hat. I will link it down below <laughs> in case you are interested. Um, so yeah, also a really good start to my reading month. Um, so then the next book I read was, oh, it was an audiobook, so I don't have it here to hold up and show you. Um, this was The Matzo Ball by Jean Meltzer. So, um, I'm doing a genre fiction project this year, um, and actually I should have mentioned that George was also part of that same genre fiction project that was a middle grade book, and I don't normally read middle grade books, um, and The Matzo Ball is a romance, so that was the book that I elected to read for um, romance. So uh, The Matzo Ball is about a woman named Rachel Rubenstein Goldblatt, and she has a secret. She is a Christmas romance novelist, <laughs> so she's hi she's hiding hidden this for years from her family because she's a rabbi's daughter and she's just really worried about how that's going to be perceived by her parents and the wider Jewish community. Um, and then uh, her agent, her her publisher, contacts her and tells her that they really want to try to diversify their offerings, so they really need her to write a Hanukkah themed romance story. And she's just at a loss because even though she's been Jewish her whole life, right, and she's a rabbi's daughter, she just doesn't feel like Judaism or Jewish holidays have that same magic to them that Christmas has. Um, and so in order to try to capture some Hanukkah magic as inspiration for this new Hanukkah romance that she's been tasked with writing, she tries to get tickets to this very elite event called the Matzo Ball. Um, which is a, a Hanukkah themed celebration, it's supposed to be a very elaborate event. Um, and she finds out it's being put on by this man named Jacob Greenblatt? Maybe. That might be his name. Anyway, Greenberg, Greenberg. Yeah, I think Jacob Greenberg, who is her old crush slash rival from Jewish summer camp from when they were like 12. Um, and so that's the. That's the romance. It's like an enemies to lovers kind of trope, I guess. Um, and they did have a little romance uh, back when they both went to Jewish summer camp together, but it ended badly. Um, and in each of their minds, it ended for reasons that they blamed the other one for. <laughs> um, so anyway, so that's the, the premise of the book. So I liked the premise. I thought it was a good premise. Um, but the execution of it, I did not care for. I just felt like it belabored a lot of things over and over again, and there was just a lot of angsting about this summer camp romance from when they were both 12, and now they're supposed to be around 30, and it's just like, seriously, have you never moved on with your life? <laughs> I just, it, it just really sort of tested, tested believability for me. Um, I was just like, are, are you really seriously hung up on somebody that you like, dated, you know, when you were 12. Um, so, so that definitely sort of strained credulity for me. And then also, a lot of stuff that happened in the book could have been avoided if the two of them had ever just had an honest freaking conversation with each other. 
Um, so I just found them both very frustrating as characters. Again, it kind of lacked believability for me. And even though I liked the premise of it, again, uh, it was sort of a very frustrating read overall, so I ended up giving it two and a half stars. And that was very disappointing, especially because I was hoping that since this was a Jewish-themed book, I, I might like it, um, especially being like the first romance that I've read in however long. Um, and also I had to wait for it forever from the library. I literally put a hold on this book in like mid-December, and it didn't come available until early April. <laughs> so I had to wait all those months just to be let down by this book. So, um, since I know that Cousin from Always Doing reads a lot of romance, I solicited some recommendations from her because, you know, part of my uh, desire to do this genre fiction project was to kind of push myself out of my comfort zone and maybe read stuff that I wouldn't normally read. And, you know, since I didn't like this, I wanted to get some recommendations from Cousin of things that she felt like I might like. And she very kindly you know, asked me some questions, came back with this long list of recommendations, so I'm probably going to read several more of um, her suggestions, and hopefully I'll find a, a romance or two that I actually like. Um, probably going to start, probably going to start a new one fairly soon, because I put a hold on it through the library, and it, and it recently became available, so thank you, cousin, for uh, your very thoughtful and helpful recommendations uh, on that front. So the fourth book that I finished uh, so far this month is a book that actually started in January. <laughs> so this is The Collected Stories of Isaac Babel. Um, so I had started this before my father's passing and then once all of that happened I just was not into reading it anymore because a lot of these stories are quite violent and have to do with war um, and, and Red Cavalry Army kind of stuff. So I was just not into reading it for a while, so I finally decided this month I would pick it back and finish it. Um, so I ended up giving it three stars overall. I think for the right reader, I can understand why this would be a very powerful um, collection and, and why Bobville's work would speak to some readers. I just think I'm not the reader. <laughs> Um, because in most of these stories, they're either, again, quite violent, because they involve army or, or military um, exploits during times of, of war and crisis, um, or nothing really happens in them. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, again, some of them I liked, some of the descriptions I liked and found very interesting. Um, and I can see why some people might like this, but I just think this was a case of I'm probably not the right reader for this book. So, three stars. Um, again, can appreciate the craft of the stories, however. Um, and then the last book that I finished just recently is um, T. Boy's The Best We Could Do. Uh, this is a graphic memoir about her family's... Uh, history in Vietnam and how she comes from Vietnam, um, from being born in Vietnam and how her family then immigrates to the United States um, after the start of the Vietnam War. Uh, and she sort of traces out the history of her mother and father um, and also of her families again sort of Im immigrating to the United States. Um, so I, oh the other thing I'll mention about this is it has a very unique sort of color palette if you can see that. So everything is done in black and white and this sort of orangey, uh, we'll call it sepia color. Um, so it's like that throughout the whole uh, graphic memoir. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to level with y'all. This took me 10 days to read and it's a graphic memoir. <laughs> so, it, you know, and, and the thing is I had heard a lot of people say that they really liked this and got a lot out of it. And I, I found it compelling in the last third or so of the memoir, um, but before then it was just, I mean it wasn't hard to read, but like when I would, you know, look at it, I just was never like excited to pick it up or anything, um, and I feel like especially the parts where she talks about her mother and father's um, individual life stories feels kind of clinical and detached in a way, and I think the last third of the memoir, which is the part that really worked for me and that I did find much more compelling, was compelling because she was in the story, like she, the author, was actually in the story, 
um, and you know we're kind of getting some thoughts and feelings and impressions from her um, so that I, I just connected to a lot more so yeah I just I just didn't feel as emotionally engaged by this book as I would have liked to but again don't necessarily listen to me because almost everyone else I've heard talk about this has really liked it but um, but I did appreciate it overall and I'm not sorry that I read it um, so three stars um, so that is everything that I have finished reading so far this month. Um, so as far as currently reading stuff goes, uh, I'm in the middle of three buddy reads right now. So one is O Pioneers. Um, I'm doing this by Willa Catherine. I'm doing this as a buddy read with Britta Bowler. And we are set to finish it in the next, uh, next couple of days here. Um, so I will do my final check-in with her on Saturday. So right now we're over halfway done with the novella and I'm enjoying it so far. I told Britta last week that I feel like the main character in this book, Alexandra, is just kind of surrounded by idiot men and I felt bad for her. <laughs> so that's going well. Um, another buddy read that I just recently started is Lost Children Archive by Valeria Luiselli. I'm doing this as a buddy read with Cena from Beating Around the Books. Um, Fraser, a Fraser Simon Springboard Thought, and there might be other people involved in this uh, group read in Voxer, I'm not sure yet. We have not done our first check-in yet, we're set to do that on Saturday, um, and I'm, you know, I'm not very far into this, but I've found it interesting so far, and I'm, I'm curious to see where it goes. Um, and then the last buddy read that I'm doing currently is Some of Us by Heather McGee. I'm doing this as a buddy read with um, Margaret Pinard. Um, we are halfway through this book, um, and it's been really interesting so far. I told Margaret in our first check-in message that um, some of the stuff in here reminds me a lot of Jonathan Metzl's book Dying of Whiteness that I read last year. Um, and Heather McGee also references a study in the first chapter of this book by um, Norton and Summers um, about racism being perceived as a zero-sum game among white people. Uh, and that's actually a study that I've taught in my classes before, so I was, uh, I was interested to see that that actually came up in this, um, in this book. So getting a lot out of this, it's very interesting. Um, more thoughts about it once Margaret and I have finished. Um, so aside from those buddy reads, I'm also currently reading Ralph Ellison's collection of essays called Shadow and Act. Um, this is a book that I started in... I don't even remember when I started it. <laughs> so, um, but I was supposed to read it for the booktube spin and then oops, that didn't happen. So, um, so anyway, so I'm a, a few essays into this and enjoying it so far. And then the last book I'm currently reading is 100% a booktube made me do it read. <laughs> so I'm listening on audiobook to Zero Fail um, by Carol Linig. This is about the Secret Service for the U.S. President. Um, and it's a, basically a history of how the Secret Service developed and then you kind of get a rundown of the Secret Service during every major presidency from Kennedy to uh, present. Well, I mean, not Biden, obviously, but Kennedy through, uh, you know, 45. So. Um, so I'm finding this very interesting so far. I'm listening to it on audiobook. Um, this was a book that I recently saw Heidi of uh, My Reading Life and Doris from Aldi Books uh, read and both kind of raved about. Um, and again, I'm finding it quite interesting so far. I'm about halfway through that. Um, so more on that when I actually finish it. So thank you for watching this. If you have thoughts about any of these books, I would love to hear that. Please let me know down in the comments below. I hope everyone is staying healthy and well. I hope you're doing good reading whenever you're reading. And until next time. Would it kill you to call your mother?